Welcome once again. Now let's take you through the newspapers and share with you the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this Monday morning. Joining us is Public Affairs Analyst Dotun Ojong. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Happy New Year. Yeah. All right. Good to see you. <laughs> let's kick off with this Nigeria newspapers. The big one there says 20 million out of school children, or kids rather, potential Boko Haram and bandits in 10 years, says former President Tulushiko Basanjo. So a lot of people will agree with him. Uh, we can also find here FCT flags off nine development projects in Abuja today. And also cholera, death toll hits 20, uh, 28,386 infections in Eboi. Also on the, this Nigerian newspaper's price of cooking gas now out of our reach, says Nigerians. And uh, also proliferation of PhD degrees, a crisis in academic integrity. I think the major story there is definitely uh, the death toll in um, uh, cholera uh, cases in Nigeria. And also the claim by the former president that 20 million out-of-school kids are potential Boko Haram and bandit uh, recruits in the next 10 years. Uh, these are the major stories on this Nigerian newspapers. All right, now let's move to the Punch news newspaper. On the front page of the Punch, read collapses 105 times in 10 years, despite $1.4 billion loans. Government fails to access additional $2.96 billion with World Bank approved electricity infrastructure loans. Buhari records 93 grid collapses. Tinubu 12, incessant grid collapse worries NERC consumers. Enters memorial, amnesty activists tackle police over protesters' harassment. Super Eagle striker Bonifay survives car crash in Germany. Foreign investors dump 355 billion Naira stocks over Forex crisis. Canada-based nurse, two business, businessmen nabbed for drug trafficking. On your dam socks, Ogun, Lagos communities as uh, flood water rises. Current insecurity worse than during my government, says Obasanjo. So it's like, I did, you know, that trading blames game. It's very interesting. We are two bad things, but, you know, one is, allow me to use the word, better than the other. Petrol markets, uh, marketers import 123 million naira or 123 million liters and continue talks with Dangote. Ami debunks TOS death rumors, retires 15 generals. Ganduje APC governors who aggrieved aspirants for Ayedatiwa. INEC rejects PDP's request for state rec redeployment. And that's all on the front page of the Punch. Let's go to the Daily Independent. Daily Independent this morning. Federal government to review fuel transportation and safety protocols across states. And that's uh, with regards uh, to the Jigawa tanker incidents. Very, very... Um, oh, sad story. I may be taking the wrong Daily Independent. Yes, I definitely am taking the wrong one. From the Daily Independent. Okay, yes, it says here, auto experts doubt success of federal government CNG vehicle conversion initiative. Say initiative lacks proper planning, safety, questionable facilities, purpose, expertise, processes may be compromised. Standards organization of Nigeria lacks capacity. And listen, I don't think it, there's any other major aspects of this whole conversation that have just not been mentioned here. This is the main and the key part of the whole CNG conversation that nobody seems to be having. And the federal government really to save face. And that's honestly what they're doing here, trying to save face because of the, the crazy increment in the price of petrol. They have thrown the CNG idea out there to save face without going through, I mean, at least having the regular process that they should go through. What are the safety concerns that Nigerians would have? Who should take responsibility when those safety concerns, you know, um, um, uh, are faulty? Nobody really has had a broad conversation on CNG. They just throw it out there and say everybody should convert to CNG because it's a cheaper alternative. It's, it, for me, it just tells a really irresponsible government um, um, towards the Nigerian citizens. Sarap urges to able to stop using DSS and progress to suppress voices. And also... NSA's anniversary, police re release detained protesters. Inigo government, police insist no seat at home, assure citizens of security. Tinubu mandates Shatima to represent him at uh, Chogum 2024. Seems the vice president is going to be really, really busy um, in um, the coming weeks or months. Uh, as Mr. President, uh, you know, seems to be, you know, ha having him represent him everywhere. He just got back from Sweden, or maybe still in Sweden. 
But a judge urged the CJN to end judicial rascality. APC Southwest Governor's National Leaders broke a piece ahead of Ondo Go Governor uh, Gumentero poll. And also Nigeria must move forward with love, not hate or anger. Tinubu gives DSS not to replace Chief Security Officer. I'm going to start, Mr. Ojan, this morning with the, of course, the CNG, which, which you know, has piqued my attention this morning. Um, auto experts doubt the success of the government's CNG vehicle conversion initiative. Said it lacks proper planning and the safety is questionable. Yeah. Um, when you talk about planning, I totally agree um, to the fact that maybe the government did not actually think it through, um, like you have rightly mentioned, um, maybe because of the fact the outcry on the removal of petrol subsidy. And like I've repeatedly mentioned here, that the problem is not with um, the removal of petrol subsidy. It's always about two things. Number one, um, what control, you do not have, you have only a minimal input on what controls the prices, Forex. So what government after government have been able to do in Nigeria is to support their currency because they know when you measure um, the amount of your export, put it side by side with your import, you know that throwing your currency um, open is actually destroying the currency. So they did those two things at the same time, and I, I know that uh, that's what got us to where we are today. So in a way to actually, um, um, how do you put the word? To, I don't want to use the word uh, safe face now because they think that, oh, if we talk Nigeria into um, CNG, that that's going to reduce the burden on petrol. CNG is not bad in itself, like I've mentioned to you before. But the process, um, the planning, um, is, is not... See, I often tell people there's a philosophical saying that the way, the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. So um, planning issue is not limited to CNG. We have problem with planning generally in Nigeria. And that's why you see that we continue to jump from one system of execution to the other because we have not imbibed um, the character of thinking through before yeah. execution. So I think majorly, when you talk about planning, I have major issue with it. In fact, that's why I've been dragging my feet as to, oh, who will I also rush and, and convert my vehicle? So, and because of um, the... The many years' dependence on petrol also, Nigerians are also a bit very skeptical because, number one, we have issues with the government. Everybody is thinking, can I actually trust my government to a point where my government will tell me to do this and I will do it? So it's a whole lot of conversation, and I think we will continue to broaden the conversation, but just know that the way we as individuals do one thing is the way we do all things. We've had problems with planning in the country, and it's not limited to the CNG. And I totally agree with you. I mean, the, the lack of planning is mostly because of one thing that I keep pointing out, the lack of accountability. Yeah. You know, because, again, if there are safety concerns with CNG, is the federal government ready for that responsibility? And just like I mentioned, this is not a, a properly thought-out strategy. This is really just, we need to find a solution or something to tell the Nigerian people to save face because of what is going on with petrol. And so they started suggesting CNG. But the Standards Organization of Nigeria is not in any way, shape, or form ready to handle the responsibility of ensuring safety of CNG conversion in Nigeria. You see, when, when you talk about, uh, and I need to quickly um, talk about some of this unit of government. Most of the time, we, we don't know also what they are going through. For example, part of the planning should have been a conversation with them. What capacity do you have? Will you be able to uh, properly uh, supervise this conversion to ensure that all the safety standards are met? This conversation never happened. So the announcement of removal of fuel subsidy is political. So the announcement of CNG operation in Nigeria is equally political. And my experience in both political, politics and practice has shown that most of the declarations and announcement of government that are purely political don't get to benefit the people as much as the policies that are well thought out by yeah. the government. All right. Uh, let's move to the Punch newspaper and look at the big story. They're talking about the grid collapse. Punch reports is 105 times in the past 10 years. Yeah. Uh, there are conversations about the possibility, possibility of the Nigerian grid, uh, the, power, the grid being handed over to the private sector. So talk to us about, you know, this, they're saying that the government has failed to access additional 2.96 billion Air World Bank 
approved electricity and infrastructure loans. And, you know, the NERC is worried. They are worried about the incessant collapses. I think there was another one that happened over um, the course of the week. Yes. Yes. Um, you will remember, I think, I think the first time we met, you remember my quote, and I, I hold it very dear to my heart, that um, Nigeria greed will not allow the national grid to function. Greed is G-R-E-E-D. You see that there are, <laughs> there, are three, there are three, if you have properly peeped into government, there are three major areas where monies have been taken out. And there's not, uh, it's, it's as pure as that. The first is security. Because people have been able to merchandise security, it makes insecurity very popular. And there's nothing anybody can do about that. We may continue to fight this war against banditry. We may continue to fight this war against Boko Haramism for a very long time until we understand that uh, people are making a whole lot of money out of this. The second area is this area of power. In the past years, you will have heard about system billionaire investment when President Tolushegun Basinjo uh, was there. You will have heard about uh, state of emergency declared by uh, President Yaradua, late President Yaradua, and the amount of investment he put into it. But again, you still discover that we hover around the 8,000 generation and 4,000 distribution. Yeah. We haven't gone past that. And the conversation we need to have is that should we continue to, join, to connect more people to the national grid? That is not working. In a country of 250 million people, at least reasonably to have life, and I don't want to talk about whether some people are in band A or band B or band D, as the case may be. What I'm talking about is that what kind of power would be reasonable for the Nigerian people? And I'm thinking in my head, 250 million people, can we work towards having 50,000 megawatts of elect electricity distributed to the people? And I'm not talking about generation because the language of government is, oh, we have generated 10,000 megawatt of electricity. But how much of that get to the people? And that is why agricultural and entrepreneurship pot potentials are being destroyed in Nigeria today. Because there's nothing you can talk about. My friend just re returned from Makodi, and he was, he was painting the picture of what happened, of how spoiled food line up a, a road to the community, to one particular mm -hmm. community. Because there's no way those people can preserve it. And at the end of the day, we come to talk about grammar of people in abject poverty, of people, and these are people that have made effort to go farming. But because of the complexity of electricity, without energy, we can do nothing. And that's the truth. In, in fact, you can also, most of the times when you want to read at night, when there's no power, you just lazy out and sleep off. And you struggle even most of the time to be productive. To sleep is a struggle. So everything around the world is actually tied around electricity. And it's so disheartening. For, I, I, I'll tell you this morning, whether you're not aware, that Lagos had this power plant even before Germany. Before Germany. So we should not be talking about close to 100 years after, and we are now talking about, oh, we are still struggling with uh, um, 5,000 megawatt of electricity. So until we get to a point where it becomes a national disaster, and we know that we will not continue to watch people take our national asset and money away in the name of trying to fix electricity year in, year out, and nothing is being done. I'm not in support of getting additional loan. I'm in support of investigating what we have spent on electricity before and the little resource we have, how we can maximize and it. I support yeah. of Take, being handed over to the private sector. The private sector, you see, what is your experience with the private sector? We've gone back and forth in 2003. Maybe you have forgotten. One of the th 2002, sorry. One of the things that former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, so to the people, when he was doing his um, privatization, when he was chairman of privatization committee, was the fact that once we privatize all of these things, they are going to work efficiently. But we discovered that at the end of the day, national asset, they were selling to their friends, their cohorts, and family members. And it didn't get to improve anything. So handing it over to the private sector is not the issue. Who are they handing it over to? Is it, is it friends of politicians who will go through the back door to take these things again because they want to make more money? I mean, so there's, there's that angle, you know, but I think that there's also the, the part where it wasn't fully privatized. The government still, would ha still has its hand in, in distribution of the, of the, yeah, of the uh, power sector that makes simply privatizing the distribution company is not enough. The transmission 
the generation, those parts are still really, you know, to a large extent handled by government. And so it's not, I don't think these, the issue with the private, uh, privatization is the sole problem with the power sector. Yes, maybe the privatization aspect should have been handled better, but government's role in generation and maybe even slightly in transmission are still key aspects of why we've not necessarily seen level growth of growth. Because when we did the same thing with telecom sector, you can see the difference and how much improvement happened with telecom sector compared to when we've done it with the power sector. Yeah. So it's not just the, you see, oh, you gave it to your friends and cronies. That's yeah. the problem. No, you, I you, feel like that aspect is still important. You see, you see, this is where the issue is. Because quickly, when you want to handle issues like this, you just look backwards to see exactly what uh, the experiences are. The first thing is that majority of Nigerians, private uh, individuals, have oil well in the country. You will say the hand of government is still there. But there are sensitive national asset that government will never allow individuals to run completely and power is one of them so maybe we should be pleading with them to hand off but again because they also know the kind of people they are going to sell these things to and i'm being honest with you individuals who are credible may not at the end of the day get anything out of it and i'm talking from experience so these are some of the things they can leave telecommunication because the impact on national security is minimal and limited. They can leave some of those things, but there are sensitive areas like petrol, energy, and all of those that they will not leave in the hand of private sector completely. So even when they say they want to privatize, at the end of the day, it will still be 40, 60, or 30, 70, as we are used to. Yeah. yeah. yeah but I think that for me, the, you know, the thing is the Nigerian factor is still... Um, pretty obvious, yeah. you know, with the power sector. Totally That's agree. why, you know, we, yeah. we find I it totally that agree. way. Let's go about the NSAS Memorial. It says the Amnesty International activists tackled police over protesters' harassment, which took place yesterday. Um, but generally, for me, the, the conversation on the NSAS Memorial is beyond just what happened yesterday. It's yeah. also, you know, taking a, 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 a broader look at where we are today with police reforms. How much better has Nigerian police become over time? Um, and how much have we really achieved you know, post the NSAS protest? Okay, we have not, um, we, we were able to achieve a name change, but we didn't do, um, we, we haven't gone uh, so far with character change. And um, I think um, one very important thing that everyone should understand is the fact that when you're talking about reform in every sector, it is not in uniform, it is in behavior. And once you don't get to a point where you reform the behavior of people, even if you change their uniform, their character remains the same. So we haven't gone, and it's not even a subject of the community people again. Even the police as, as, as a unit of the federation or as a unit in government, is not even happy with itself. And I can say it on Thursday, retired police officers were trying to beg the federal government that their retirement, uh, what do they call that thing, can no longer feed them. Yeah. An average policeman you see on the road now, if I mention the cadres, and even as an officer, even as an officer, starting from ASP, what they take home can hardly take them home. So the reality of police reform in Nigeria is only being mouthed at every point in time that there's confrontation, at every point in time that there's outcry in the community, nobody has really gone deep into reforming the police the way it should be. And one of the things I keep telling the people is that the police is the marketer of the behavior of the government, directly to the people. Now, for example, if you say, my government is fighting corruption, oh, we have EFCC, and people still see the police collect money from them on the highway, they will not be able to relate with the bigger fight that you think you are fighting against corruption. So the police, the behavior of the police portray the behavior of the politician. Yeah. The behavior of the politician says of the character of the entire community. So you see how interwoven this is in, 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 in community um, and communal living. So we haven't done much about police reform. And it's really heartbreaking at this point in time because the Nigerian system, are, when you allow these people to go out, for example, all of these their missions that they go out, they come back with commendation. How come we are not able to police ourselves, to respect one another within our country? It's simply because of the fact that maybe um, the people in power are yet to come home with the times that police is the symbol of governance of any nation. And the earlier you reform the Nigeria police, the better. Because I'm even afraid that um, the protests, and maybe call this political pro prophecy, the protests that will lead to something um, 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 
that will change our life as a people in this country may be one again, once again from police brutality. Because at every point in time, you still see them. I still drive past, I still see how they harass people on the road. I, I, sometimes I have to practically park and intervene. Because these people don't know the, um, the behavior of the 21st century man. They just say anybody they see is a Yahoo boy. Anybody they see is a Yahoo gay. No, that's not how to police a community. So reform, we haven't really done much about it, and it's quite unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. Uh, there are more stories. Unfortunately, we cannot take them. This is all that we can take this morning. We'll be back again to review more papers, same time tomorrow. Mr. Dr. Mojan, thank you very much for your time with us. Thank you.